Said amen. amen. Amen again. Amen. Come on, if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time, come on and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And welcome you here, amen, to the Wayne Show Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. On Highway 17, Miller, Georgia. Amen. The day we come to praise God. Amen. We come to lift him up. Amen. Because if you're breathing today. Amen. You have a right to praise God. Amen. Somebody said there was a mandate. The division of Psalm 150 said, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the permanent of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sorcery and heart. Praise him with the temporal and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and organ. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got a reason to praise God. Amen. God has brought us through another week, protecting us from danger seen as well as unseen. Everything didn't go the way I wanted to go this week, but God is still worthy. Somebody said he's still worthy. He's still worthy to be praised. Amen. Look at him and say, you know, praise him. Do anybody have a praise him in your heart this morning? Are you willing to just praise him, Jesus, our blessed Savior? Don't just pray him sometime, but from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Jesus is still worthy. He's still worthy to be praised. And you feel like that? Come on, stand with me. Oh, we're going 
praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, bless us. John in heaven, we come this morning just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to be able to praise you and to call on your holy and your righteous name. But God, we come this morning to tell you thank you for another day's journey. We come to tell you thank you for your grace and your mercy. That you allowed us to see a day we've never seen in all the days of our lives. We come and declare that you're still worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Your God has been a tough week, but you're still worthy to be praised. Your God, we come today before we go to Father and pray, ask you to forgive us of our sins, creating us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit. Because we gather here to worship you. Some physically, some virtually. But yet we don't want to call to worship you. Because you alone are worthy of our worship. Did I thank you for how you watched over through this week. Took care of us from day to day. Took care of us from hour by hour. Took care of us from minute by minute. Watch over us second by second. For that reason, we come now just to tell you thank you. And your God, we pray that you will visit us today with your Holy Spirit. In the midst of what we got going on, around here is morning time, God. But even in the midst of morning, we come to worship you. In the midst of morning, we come to praise you. Because we need your strength. We need your power. We need a touch from you, your God. And you know, somebody in that morning, somebody in your God got heart trouble. Somebody dealing with a sickness. Somebody dealing with mental illness. Somebody dealing with depression, dear God. So we come to get them out of ourselves. Concentrating on you. We come to worship you, dear God. We come to lift you up. We come to magnify you. We didn't come to magnify our hurt. We didn't come to magnify our pain. We didn't come to magnify our circumstances. But we come to magnify you, dear God. Because you declare we can call on you in the day of trouble. You declare, dear God, that all things are working together for good. For those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. So we're gathered, dear God, at this place of assembly just to lift you up. Just to worship you. God, because you know all about it. You're a God that cares. You're a God where nothing catches you by surprise. So we lift you up, God, and we thank you, dear God, for being up in present. We thank you for being omnipotent. We thank you, dear God, for being all-knowing. And we love you today. And we lift you up, God. We ask that you will visit us. Visit us from all high today. That we all can live in a better state at which we can. Because we need your spirit now to give us the strength to rise above our circumstances. To rise above what's going on right now. Because we know dear God, if we just worship you, you being our creator, if we just worship you, you being the one that loves us more than anyone in this world, if we just worship you, in spirit and in truth. We know that everything is going to be alright. Sometimes we might not be able to get over, but with your help, we'll get through it. Your God, we ask that you'll move by your power today. Be with the Milton family. Strip them with the weak. Fill them up with the torn down. Prop them up on the other side. Be with this way of the road, church family. And you God, be with those who are going all over this world. 
Even those bereaved family, dear God, be they present here in the time of trouble. You told them to let our heart be troubled. Though he believe in God, believe also in me. So dear God, we're not going to let our heart be troubled. We're going to lift you up in the midst of our troubled heart. But when it's all said and done, let the word of our mind and the meditation of our heart be accepted in your sight. Oh Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. We ask this in Jesus in Christ's name we pray. And all God people say amen, amen, amen. 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 Come on, you've got to have to pray. Do you believe that he's a prayer? Here is God. Amen. While the choir blesses us. Amen. Come on, you've got to have to pray to them. Amen. Amen.
Amen. So as we get ready to bless these tithes and offer all those who give it virtually, you can go to www.givelify.com, www.givelify.com. Set Williams Road Missionary Baptist Church, Amen. Howard 17, Bella, Georgia. Amen. You can give virtually. Amen. We thank by way of Cash App. Amen. Amen. We thank Amen. Two hundred dollars. Amen. For Amen. Brother John Ray Harvey. Amen. Today, Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. Get it all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Amen. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for him. Amen. And for what he has given. Amen. In Jesus' name. That's Miami. Amen. Now, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For him. Let us stand. Amen. As we get ready to give, as we're purposed in our heart. Father heaven, we come now just to say thank you. We thank you, dear God, for giving us the strength and ability to go out and obtain well. Thank you, dear God, to be another witness that every good and perfect gift come from you above. Thank you, dear God, to be another witness, dear God, that it's because of you that we move and have our being. And dear God, that because we love you with all our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength, and all that's within us, we bring these tithes and we bring these offerings. We ask, dear God, that you'll bless us and it be used with our building and the advancement of your kingdom. And dear God, most of all, touch our heart that we give in the right spirit. Because dear God, we don't want our giving, no our living, to be in vain. Dear God, we ask dear God that you'll bless those who get ready to give here physically, bless those who are giving virtually, thank you, and bless those, dear God, who've already said virtually. And dear God, we know, dear God, that your word will not return void. It will do that which you were set out to do. You will up the windows of heaven. You'll pour us out a blessing where we won't have room enough to receive. We thank you for these mercy gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God people say amen. 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 Starting from the rear, let us come around. Amen. And give in Jesus' name. Amen. Virgil Lynch is the pastor at 7 o'clock on August the 15th. 
Amen. Um, also, Live River Baptist Church, amen, at 3404 Jack Kelly Road in Augusta, Georgia, amen, will be a church of revival, amen, the week after that, amen, that Wednesday, August 23rd at 7 p.m., August 23rd at 7 p.m., that's all for Tobacco Road, amen, in Augusta, amen, so, amen, let us, amen, uh, do our best, amen, to make sacrifices, amen, to go and be a part, amen, of these local worship services that we've been invited to, Amen. Let us go join with them and worship God. Amen. Amen. Thank you already in advance for making putting on your schedule. Amen. And I know you're going to do your best to get there. Amen. With that being said, those of all our upcoming outside engagements at this time, amen. At this time, the choir is going to come back and they're going to bless us again. Amen. And then we're going to get into, amen, what I need most. I need the word. Can I get away to somebody? Amen. Come on, everybody. Have a praise for the choir. Amen.
back. Amen. Blessings and honor and glory. They all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Amen. Today, if you will, ask that you join, go with us to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. Go to the second chapter of Matthew, beginning at verse number one, Matthew chapter two, verse number one. And, and once you have that, go to some Romans chapter 12, verse one through two, Matthew, the second chapter, Romans, the 12th chapter, Matthew, the second chapter, and Romans, the 12th chapter. Both of those will be beginning at the first verse. So glad to have you on tomorrow's with us today. Amen. Thank God. Amen for him. Come on, you got a hand up praise for him. Amen. Tomorrow's. Amen. Amen. His, his fiance. And have the wedding day come yet? Okay, all right. I saw it on Facebook. I just forgot the date. Amen. It, we were so glad to have with him, not, not, no longer not his fiance, but his wife. Amen. Come on, you give God a hand of praise. Amen. We congratulate you all. We salute you today. Amen. Amen. A happily long life marriage. Amen. Every day going to get sweeter than the day before. Amen. 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 Matthew, amen. Chapter 2. Matthew, chapter 2. Verse number 1. You have to say amen. Matthew, chapter 2. Verse number 1. Amen. You have it. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. Thank God for those who are joining us virtually. Amen. And they are joining with us. Amen. In the word. Matthew, the second chapter. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to what? Worship him. Worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art not thou the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and what? Worship him. Worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with what? And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and did what? Worship and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, verse number 2. You should know it by heart now. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's enough. God's word for God's people. Father in heaven, we come down to say thank you. That you allow us to worship you. You allow us to praise you. You allow us, dear God, to give, dear God, our love and to tithes and offering. Thank you for allowing us to pour ourselves out to you. But dear God, we need you now to pour yourself into us. Dear God, allow your servant Williams to decrease now that your anointing may increase. Dear God, we pray, dear God, that all your people will be in power right now through your word. Dear God, we pray as your word fall on good soil. We pray to God that the saved will be encouraged, the unsaved discouraged in their lifestyle and won over to you, and the backslider, dear God, repent and turn from their ways and come back, dear God, in the full protection of God's love and grace. And dear God, we pray now, 
as the word go forth, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be accepted in your sight. Oh Lord, you're my strength and you're my redeemer. We ask this in Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people say amen. 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 Today, there is a word from the Lord as we continue the God kind of worship series. Amen. The God kind of worship series. And John 4 24, amen, says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Today, amen, we'd like to continue this series, amen, the God kind of worship. But today, we're going to talk about the depth of this worship. The depth of this worship. Somebody say the depth yeah. of this worship. Amen. So today, we'd like to, amen, to draw our hearts, amen, back, amen, to the theme of worship today. Amen. Because in our last message, we considered that when we have the God kind of worship, that no matter what happens on this journey called life, our God has it all under control. That's right. As long as you got the God kind of worship, we found out last Sunday that God got it all under control. And the text that before us this morning, we're going to take, amen, another glimpse, amen, of the God kind of worship, amen. And, and, and this passage, I know most of you all saw when I was reading this passage, y'all probably said, Pastor, Pastor, but he been drinking. Amen, because whenever you read this passage, they read this passage at Christmas time. But I stop by to tell you, this passage of scripture is more than a Christmas scripture. I want you to understand that today. This passage here, amen, yes, it emphasizes, amen, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. But what the wise men did in this verse is something that should be done every day. Not just on Christmas, what they did in this verse should be did every day in the life of every believer. I want you to understand that today. Many of you are very familiar with this passage, but let's look at it once more today, amen. Because I want us to consider this passage, amen, and not from the perspective of Christmas. I don't want you to look at it from the perspective of Christmas today, but I want you to look at it from the perspective of worship. God wants us to see this text from the perspective of worship because these verses can teach us today some valuable lessons concerning the nature of worship. See, we need to understand the nature of worship because remember, amen, worship, amen, is not something that happens from the outside. Worship is what's already in us. I don't, can't nobody push you to be a worship. The musician can't play to make you worship. Now, if worship ain't in you, worship ain't gonna come out of you. When worship is in you, worship don't need no music. When worship is in you, worship don't even need no company. Amen, you can worship God all by yourself. But in this text, as we watch these wise men, how they worship the Lord today, I want to reveal, amen, certain characteristics to you of worship, amen, that God has revealed to me, amen, that should be true in our own worship. And then we will look at eight of those characteristics, amen, I'm going to identify all of them, I'm going to expound on all of them just a little bit, amen, so my introduction is going to be longer than my preaching. Amen. But if we don't get through, we'll stop. Amen. And take off next time where we left from, left off from. But don't get discouraged. Amen. God's word must go forth. Amen. Today I want you to understand as I share these eight characteristics of worship with you. Amen. I want to say a few words. Amen. About each of them. The first one I want to talk about. Amen. About them. Amen. And we're still looking at Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. The first amen characteristic I want to look at. Amen. And I'm not just going to be a recap of what we already said. Amen. Amen. But do you know how something becomes a habit? You have to go over and over and over and over again to it catch its root. All right. So the first characteristic we want to look at is that their worship was intentional. That's number one. Their worship was intentional. Intentional. Somebody say intentional. In other words, these wise men, they came to Jerusalem for the sole purpose of worship. It was not by accident, but they came on purpose to worship. And I want you to understand worship was the reason why that they left their home. Worship was the reason why they started on this journey. Worship why was why they brought treasure. Worship was why they traveled. Worship was at the heart of everything that we see they do in this passage. In this, a lot of people get hung up on the gifts. But I stop by to tell you, worship was at the heart of everything. Everything that they did was centered around worship in this passage. 
I want you to understand that they the wise men. They had their heart set on coming before the Lord Jesus, the baby Jesus. They wanted to come before him and to worship him. Somebody say your worship must be intentional. It ain't worship if it ain't intentional. I came here intentionally to worship God today. Worship has to be intentional. And just like the wise men worship was intentional, our worship of him should also be intentional. When you come to worship service, you ought to come to intentionally worship him. When we come to this house of worship, it should be our goal Amen. to worship him. And when people ask you are here, sometimes you ought to be able to tell them, I don't know who all is here because I will worship him. Him. If you would tell everybody who was at church, guess what? You are worshiping him. You ought to get lost in worshiping him. That's the way we ought to be when we come into his house. Our goal ought to be to worship him. We should even approach him in prayer. Amen. We worship in our hearts. We owe up his word. We should be seeking him in a spirit of worship. God, I need your word to speak to me. And worship should be something that doesn't just happen to us. It should be something that we set our hearts to. We ought to do this on purpose, y'all. I want you to understand that it should be something that we seek. We should seek to worship him. We, because worship is something that motivates us. Worship all of You know, I came today, came to worship today because I came to worship him. I got enough going on in my life not to be here. But because it's about worshiping him, I have to forget about myself and concentrate on him. I want you to understand, I come to worship him. Worship, amen, is something that we seek. Worship is something that motivates us. You know why a lot of people don't, don't, don't make a big deal about coming to worship? Because it ain't intentional. I'm intentionally at worship service. The wise men, you must realize the depth of their worship. The depth of their worship is that their worship was intentional. If you're going to have the God kind of worship, you got to do it intentionally. Somebody said I'm doing it on purpose. The second thing is that their worship was volitional. Their worship was volitional. V-O-L-I-T-I-O-N-A-L. In verse number two, their worship was volitional. It says, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to what? Worship him. Good God Almighty. I want you to understand that it was volitional. Pastor, what do you mean by volitional? It was an act of their wills. It was an act of their wills. Remember, I told you that it's so important that we have the mind of Christ. Because wherever the mind goes, the will will follow. Wherever the mind goes, the will will follow. And somebody else needs to get this one. Wherever the mind goes, not only will the will follow, but also your emotions will follow. Somebody say your mind got to be right. But it was an act of their will because of their mind was in the right place. They were determined in their heart that they would worship him. Nobody forced them to leave their home. Nobody forced them to leave their family. It was volitional. Nobody forced them to take a trip across the desert. No one made them give their gifts up. It was, amen, volitional. It was because of the worship that was on the inside of them. Let me tell you something. No one held a gun to their head and told them to bow down. It was an act of the will. It was in them. And just like nobody should take a gun, amen, and make them bow down. You can, if you got a gun in somebody's head and make them bow down, guess what? It ain't real worship. I know y'all have heard it in the story, man, when talk about a man walking in church with a gun and, and he told them, who all don't love Jesus? Get out of here. And you know they were tearing that church up. Many of them left. Over three quarters of them left. And when they ran out, the rest of them that were sitting there, the guy took off their mask. They said, now let's have true worship. Amen. 
Because guess what? If you come to worship him, ain't no gun going to run you out of here. Ain't no gun going to make you do that. We sing it deep. They sing all the time. If I die, let me die in the army. How you going to die in the army? The Lord running. Pastor, that comes and God, why they ask you to have comes in? Walk by faith. Come on. Not by sight. Right. Because if you walk out of him saying you don't love him, you are denying him. And he said, if you be ashamed to deny me before me, if you be ashamed to hold me before me, I'll be ashamed to hold you before my father, which is in heaven. Right. Well, you know, I'm just trying to live. That's why a lot of people go to hell. They're trying to live. They're trying to do what makes them feel good. But remember, we're supposed to be doing what is a pleasing and the acceptable will of God. Somebody say volitional. I want you to understand that they, our worship ought to be volitional as well, just like these wise men. We should determine in our heart that we're not going to worship just to go through the motion. But we're going to set our hearts, amen, on the task, amen, of loving the one who died for us. Let me tell you something. In my heart heaven, and I'm going through some stuff, but I had to set my heart, amen, on the one who died for me. I had to set my heart on the one who paid it all for me. Let me tell you something. When we come to worship, we are not seen just because the congregation sing. Amen. You are not be singing just because the person sitting beside you are singing. We are not bow down in prayer just because it's time to pray. We shall open our Bible up, amen, not just because it's a sermon. We are not go to church just because it's time to go to church, but we are to go because we want to worship him. It's my will to worship him. And let me tell you, all of the for that to be volitional, you know what we got to do? What we got to do, Williams, Road, and listeners, we got to determine in our heart that every song, every prayer, every sermon, every deed, every day, every breath, we got to make sure that it's an act of supreme worship that's designed to glorify our Redeemer. Everything we do is got to be designed to glorify our Heavenly Father. It might not sound good to you, but I ain't saying to you. It might not sound good to you, but I ain't preaching to you. I'm preaching to him. God is my audience. See, everything you do, God has to be your audience. Now, we can't get caught up in the people, because sometimes people want you to preach to their itching ears. But you got to let God be your audience. Good God Almighty. I stopped by to tell you today their worship was volitional. Number three, their worship was personal. Their worship was personal. Let's be looking at the depth of their worship. Their worship was personal. In other words, they did not allow others to do their worshiping for them. I say they did not allow others to do their worshiping for them. Good God Almighty. These men involve self in the worship. Let me tell you something today. If self ain't in the worship, it ain't worship. When you worship him, you can't let other people do your worship. It's something that you got to do. Somebody said you got to do. Look what they did. Look what they did. In verse number two, they came from a great distance. Verse number two, they came by faith. Verse number two, they rejoiced when they found him. Verse number 10, they humbled themselves before him. Verse number 11, they willingly lavished their gifts upon him. Their worship involved sin. You can't worship God if you don't involve yourself. Somebody say yourself. Say my worship must be personal. That's right. Our worship also must be personal. And too many people in our modern churches try to worship by proxy. They try to worship by delegation. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, what I'm saying is that is they let other people do all the same. Some people don't say. They let other people. Let the choir do all the same. Some people don't pray. 
They let somebody else do all the praying. Some people don't clap their hand. They let somebody else do all of the clapping. In other words, they, they let other people testify for them. And they never open their mouths or they never give an action in public worship to give God a vocal praise, to be a, a public witness that God has blessed them with his grace and his mercy. They let other people praise God for them. They let other people worship God for them. But let me tell you something today. If you can't do it personally, it don't belong to you. Somebody say personal worship. We got a lot of people that let other people give. They never experience the blessing that come with investing in the work of the Lord. The scripture said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Now, if you're dependent on somebody else's label, okay. that label's going to be in vain concerning you. But when you labor in worshiping God yourself, your labor is not in vain. Why in vain? Don't just read it. It came from me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you why I ain't intimidated by T.D. Jakes. Let me tell you why I ain't intimidated by no other mega preacher. Let me tell you why I'm not intimidated. And if one of them called me to preach right now, let me tell you why I wouldn't be intimidated if I walked up in the parlor house to preach. Because if I walked up there and preach, I don't have to be T.D. Jakes. Amen. All I got to do is be Bobby G. William Jr. That's right. That's right. And when you're used to worshiping God, yourself, you don't focus on nobody else. You don't focus on pleasing nobody else. I had no part of somebody else said, Rev, you know you got to preach now. You know, son, I got to preach no different than I preach every time. Because what I do is personal. My worship is personal. My worship is for God. My worship ain't for change. My worship is for God. It ain't for you. It's for God. Somebody say it's for God. I want you to understand our worship should be personal. I don't know what the Lord done for you. Amen. But I know what he done for me. Amen. I don't know the times he came through for you. Yes, yes. But I know the time that he came through for me. Amen. I know about his grace. I know about his mercy. I know about his glory in my life. Amen. Somebody say in my life. In my life. And because I know these things, the least I can do is worship. If you know what he means to you, you know how he done made ways for you, you know how he done protect you when you were right, protect you when you were wrong. Because you know personally, it ought to create a worship. Somebody say a worship. I want you to understand Hebrews, amen, 13 and 5, 15 lets us know that. But I want you to understand today I love, amen, the word because it says, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I want you to understand that worship has to be personal. Somebody said that worship was personal. Number four, the worship was confrontational. I want you to see the depth of their worship. You hear that song talking about how deep is your love? No, how deep is your worship? How deep is your worship? Because love ain't always good. Not the kind we know. Now, godly love is always good. But that kind of agree we talk about ain't good. They come on early, make you stay out all night, make you do wrong. Huh? That, 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 no, that, that ain't the right kind. Somebody say confrontational. The worship was confrontational. Verse number three. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was what? Trouble. Trouble. And not only him, and all what? Jerusalem. And all Jerusalem with him. See, look at the depth of their worship ministry because, well, I want the church to understand that their worship was confrontational. In other words, not everyone was pleased by the worship of the wise men. Let me tell you something today. Your worship ain't no good if it don't offend nobody. Your worship ain't going to be confrontational. Everybody ain't going to 
approve of you worshiping him. Amen. But you ought to worship him anyway. Amen. Come on and say worship him anyway. The Bible says right here we're told that Herod was troubled. We're told that all of Jerusalem with him. Herod thought that since he was a king, he thought that he should be worshipped. Let me tell you why some of your friends don't like you no more. Let me tell you why some of your own loved ones don't like you no more. It's because since you find Jesus, you don't worship them no more. You worship him. As long as they can tell you what to do and who they like and who they talk to and we good. I got your back. But when you lost the mind of your own and got the mind of Christ then I have to say it that way. When you lost the mind of your own see God, you were yours but you were letting somebody else control it. Amen. But let me tell you, somebody ought to be controlling your mind. If ain't no one or two people going to control your mind. Either it's going to be devil or it's going to be God. Amen. Amen. Who controlling your mind? You know what people used to say, I used to have two guys who tell me, and, you know, and, we, and I, I, I was their friend, you know, and, and they like, they see me speak to such and Hey, man, you speak to him? Yeah, I speak to him. Man. I don't mess with him. I don't fool with him. You know, he ain't my kind. I said that's your problem. Amen. Amen. That's right. I ain't gonna treat people based on how you want me to treat. That's right. Amen. I'll treat people based the way he want me to treat them. Amen. And Grandma made it so plain. The simple Grandma said, "Baby, my dog deserves to be spoke to." That's right. Amen. Every time you walk by a dog, I don't know if it's out of fear or what, but you like, "Hey, boy, hey, girl." <laughs> You can be a nice girl, but you, you know you don't want to jump on it. All right? But if you can respect a dog, how you can't respect somebody who's created in God's own image and in God's own life? Let me tell you something. Your worship, amen, will be confrontational. Their worship was confrontational. The king, amen, he wanted to be bowed down to, but he was troubled that the wise men had came to his town so that they could worship another king. But let me tell you something today. Every king, every king, every person that sits on a throne, you must realize that you are part of the king of kings. You are part of the Lord of law. I don't care what position you hold on your job. You have to realize that whatsoever you do, you do it wholehearted as unto the law. And if you do what you do as unto the law, you ain't going to have no problem with other folk buying down to the Lord. Amen. But if you want the credit, it's going to become confrontational. When you show people that you're really worshiping God, the devil of your worship will call confrontation. Somebody say, but you still got to stand. And I would text the wise men, they, they, they didn't come here to worship Herod. They didn't, they didn't come to worship in the temple. They came for one purpose. And that was their purpose to bow down at the feet of baby Jesus. Not just a baby, but a baby who is eternal God. A baby who is the, 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 the king of kings. A baby who is the Lord of lords. Let me tell you something. Whenever, whenever you reach a place, we're going to stop at this one. I'm going to take off when we get back um, the next Sunday here. Whenever you reach a place where you can't give your complete, wholehearted worship to Jesus, you're going to offend something. That's why your worship got to be real. Because the death of worship is that some people going to get offended when you worship him. Let me tell you, everybody ain't going to think that God is worthy of the kind of love that you give. Some people are going to criticize the way that you worship him. Amen. Not everyone going to think that what you're doing is needed. Your song, your tears, your shout. Your testimony, your expression of love, your obedience will bother some people. Amen. True worship is confrontation. Yes. Yes. Why, Pastor, he preached a time. He's saying he has his eyes closed. Why am I worship bother you? Come on. Why are you worry about how I worship? See, your worship is confrontation. People don't want you to worship a certain way. They want you to worship their way. But whatever you do, it's got to be personal. If it ain't what 
you feel in your heart, then it ain't no good. Somebody say, gotta be coming from your heart. Let me tell you something. The God we serve, he's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all our worship. We ought to give it to him, and we ought to give it to him beyond any measure. Somebody say, give it to him. How deep is your worship? Some of you all didn't know why some folk pick at you when you worship God. It's because true worship is confrontational. True worship will upset other folk when they ain't serving the same God that you will serve. True worship is not only confrontational, but true worship must also be personal. It must be volitional. And it must be intentional. Number one, we covered worship. The depth of the worship, it was intentional. They did it on purpose. It was volitional because it was an act of their will. It wasn't an act of the music. It wasn't an act of the worship team leading them. And then it was personal. It came from the inside. And whenever you know who you are and you know whose you are, some folks ain't going to be comfortable with you. Amen. Your worship becomes confrontation. Let me tell you something. Don't, the Bible says don't think it's some strange thing. When fiery trials try you. True worship is confrontational. It don't take on that. But let me tell you something. He died on the cross. But before he died on the cross, he left his home in glory. Had everything. Everything he had ever desired. But he left everything. Because he had created somebody in his own image and his own likeness. And they had failed from grace. They had failed from their holy state and they was on their way to hell. But he said, I'm going to leave all of this. I'm going to leave all of this. I'm going to go down there. Body's going to be prepared for me and I'm going to be the ultimate sacrifice to make them back in right relationship with me. That way I am. That never leave me on so. And I can see him saying, what are the odds of saying, if I go, everybody ain't going to receive me. If I go, everybody ain't going to come to me. But it meant so much to him that if only one came, he would be pleased. It's his will that none should perish. But if only one came, it was worth it to him. Now just think about that for a minute. If you had to make an investment, because in this life, not just living now, in this life, since this world started, I'm sure there have been seeing the people that have been born. But would you say, you know what? I'll make a sacrifice if I'm a zillion people if don't go one person get saved. I'll still go down and die. Well, say, Reverend, I don't like those odds. I'm not doing that. But Jesus said, you know what? If only one comes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So if he'll die, for if only one come out of a Z, why would you let it stop your worship because only a few people come to church? Why would you let it stop your worship because you just had some trouble? You know how much trouble he went through to save us? The devil. Of his worship is the God kind of worship that we must have. He voluntarily, he intentionally, he came, he died. Free will. 
and it was confrontational. It got upset. All he would do was hear the people and making ways for people that got upset with it. So today that ought to help us see that when it's real worship, it's going to be confrontational. It was confrontational with Jesus. And every time Jesus spoke, Jesus always said, he said, well, I'm speaking of my father, which is in heaven. All he wanted to do was please his father. And if it's going to be the God kind of worship, the devil of our worship must be willing to please the Father intentionally, personally, volitionally, and even if we have to face confrontation, the doors of the church is open. If you're here today or if you're listening virtually and you want the God kind of worship, if you want the God kind of worship, it's nothing that man can give. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. In other words, you must be. You got to be born again. When you get a change of heart, when you have a change of mind, change the spirit. I said, well, you have a change of heart. You have a change of mind. God will change your spirit. Amen. You might say you ain't going to tell nobody. But you won't be able to keep it to yourself. You might have said you're still going to go to the club. But because you change the spirit, you find out club ain't even in you no more. When you come to him in true worship, God will change you. Don't be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're here today and you're not saved, you ought to come. Tomorrow's not promised to you. If you're listening virtually and you're not saved, the day is a good day. The Bible says the day is the day of salvation. If you just hear his voice and not harden your heart, right where you are, Pray this prayer silently in your spirit. If you are not saved and you want to be saved, Father in heaven, forgive me of my sins. I know that I've done wrong and I come short of your glory. And I believe that you so love me that you gave your only son to die on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I accept you into my life. Not just as my Savior, but I accept you as my Lord. For I don't know how to serve God. I don't know how to worship God. But I make you Lord of my life. And as I meditate in your word day and night, lead me and guide me into your truth. And while I'm meditating, you told us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Lead me to a place of worship. That I can become a part of and grow in your word and join in the fellowship with them, worship you and lifting you in spirit and truth. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, whether you be here physically or whether you be out there virtually, you are saved right now. But it's your responsibility to let God lead you to a place of worship where you can grow in the word. Amen. And we invite you, amen, to come to, to Williams Road, amen. Come and fellowship with us, amen. Amen. Because amen was done virtually, don't have the same effect that's what's done in the house. So come on, amen, and enjoy it with us, amen. We're not telling you to come and be a member, but we're just telling you to come and worship, amen. And let God decide, amen, whether this is the place for you. But we invite you to come to this physical place of worship, Highway 17, Miller, Georgia. We invite you to come, amen, and worship God with us. Amen. To all of you that came out today, we thank God for you. We trust and believe that something been said to encourage your heart. And I pray today that we hold on to the God kind of worship. Hold on to the God kind of worship. Remember that the depths of this worship got to be intentional. In the midst of what we're going through right now, we still have to intentional worship Him. Amen. I'm done now. But all, amen. Ever since the other night, I've been, it's been a struggle for me. But I've been intentionally worshiping God. I said, praise him, Bobby. 
Bobby, just keep praising God. Just, just keep giving him glory. And that's the only thing that's giving you through is that I intentional. I intention. I'm telling you that because, amen, when you intentionally worship God, it doesn't mean that it always feel good. Amen. I got some questions, but guess what? My questions really don't matter. I just got to intentionally worship him. And if you intentionally worship him, we're going to understand it better one day. By and by. Father in heaven, we come down to say thank you. Thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for getting us through this day. And dear God, as we go throughout the rest of this day, let your word, dear God, that has fallen on good soil in our heart, let it do like what yeast does to the lung. Let your word rise up and swell up in us, dear God. To dear God, we become the walking word, the talking word, the speaking word, that everywhere we go, Dear God, we ask now that you give us travel and grace back to our home safely and continue to be with us and keep us in your care as our prayer. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. See you on Wednesday at midweek.